Aliens Explored is a weekly podcast exploring famous and obscure cases of UFO sightings, alien abductions and other strange events from both a believing and a sceptical perspective whilst keeping an open mind. I'm Stu Jackson, a professional actor and amateur ufologist with a particular interest in the crop circle phenomenon. I'll be debating that otherworldly visitations are real. The truth is out there. And I'm Neil Kelly. I'm a professional actor as well and used to work for the military as an intelligence analyst. I'll be arguing from a more doubtful point of view. I mean, it's all a bit far-fetched, isn't it? Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas! (laughs) And happy holidays! To you all, and a, a um, cool Yule all. for those of a, that persuasion, of a pagan persuasion. Uh, cool Yule, happy Kwanzaa, happy Hanukkah, happy holidays um, for everyone out there. Um, we're here. It's Christmas Day. Christmas Day. Bon Noël. Pro Weihnachten. Prettige Kerstdagen. Hoeve Yule. Wesselwijksviand. Joyeux Noël. Uh, oh, what else can we do? We we know oh, all this. Feliz Navidad. We have to have some Spanish. <laughs> Feliz, Feliz Navidad. Navidad. Um, as um, <laughs> as actors, uh, we often get to play seasonal characters from this time of year, so we know how to say Merry Christmas in lots of different languages. In fact, that's how we met, isn't it, Neil? We we did, yes, <laughs> Father Christmas. Yeah. Yes, doing a horrible Father Christmas job. We we were bonded by <laughs> adversity in the face of a shitty, sitting in the mud, <laughs> a forest. No, we're not going to. We're not going to name names. Oh, sorry. Yes, of, of a, we to get. <laughs> well, cut, cut cut that bit. Um, yeah, no, we, no, we, no, we, I'll, I'll put a bleep over it. Don't worry. Joined joined in adversity, sitting in the the muddy hell hole in a forest in <laughs> the middle of winter. You're giving away too many details again. But a great experience for the family. I can't, I can't knock it. <laughs> I'll bleep which county that is as well. <laughs> That's two bleeps already. <laughs> well, this is a very special Christmas episode that we are putting out here today. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm saying to know, you know, are you drunk yet? It's Christmas Day. Of course, for us, we are a couple of weeks away because we're pre-recording this, aren't we? We are, yes, although we both have green screens with Christmassy scenes behind us because that's 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 how we're earning a living at the moment. We do we we're doing an online service at the moment. Um so yes. But hopefully for you all listening, uh you've all had an amazing day uh with everyone you can see at the moment. Um and we're here to discuss a really interesting one. So, regardless of what your religious, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, Persuasion, that's the word. Regardless of what your religious persuasion might be, uh, we're here to discuss the concept that's been put forward as to whether or not Jesus may have been an extraterrestrial. And you can't get much more Christmassy than that. You can't can get you? much more Christmassy than that. Let me just say, I mean, we know that um, that many of our listeners are based in America. Have, have you been to the United States, Stu? I haven't. So not, well, not one thing I can yet. tell you, one thing that really strikes me as a, as a European visiting the United States is how much more religious they are, how much larger Jesus Christ looms in their lives than, than, than people in Europe that it's not mm. uncommon everywhere you go to see bil- big billboards up just randomly everywhere just saying things like praise the lord praise jesus god bless all, all this kind of thing jesus saves you're gonna make a joke here <laughs> <laughs> not on my income it wouldn't. Uh, yeah outside the anyway. bank yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no but they, they also they have things you know they have these we don't have for instance tele evangelists in this country uh, or, or in Europe, certainly not with their own TV stations. Certainly not, not making mega bucks uh, out, out of their out of their congregations. Um, they're not flying around in private jets 
or anything like that. I, I mean, there, there might be a couple of digital radio stations that have a sort of Christian bent or a, an Islamic bent, but um, nothing like you get in, in the States with televangelists. And also we don't have mega churches. On busy times like Christmas and Easter, our church congregations are measured in dozens rather than hundreds or thousands. So yes. um, religion is a can be a sensitive subject in America. That's that's kind of what I'm getting at. And I also need to say um, that I'm not religious. So, um, so I, I, but I I will tread with care. We don't want to we don't want to lose our listeners, do we? Just by being insensitive. So. Well, well, no, absolutely, and and yeah, I think that's a very good point. Uh, this is being done with the greatest of respect to anyone's beliefs. Um, you know, we we don't claim to have answers. I mean, we, neither of us are are particularly religious people. Um, I I like to think I'm a spiritual person, but I'm not a religious person. Um, so that's that's very much the case. But. Um, yeah, so, yeah, greatest of respects to uh, anybody out there who does believe. Um, and hopefully nothing we're going to say is going to tread on that. But, you know, if it does... Yeah, hopefully most of our listeners, they're, it's their, yeah, they, they are consumed with their, their interest in, uh, in UFOs, in, in alien encounters, and um, are open to the possibility that things that are recorded could be evident... And, you know, it, extraterrestrial or paranormal phenomena that are recorded could be evidence of of an alien visit and of course the 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 story of of jesus christ the the greatest story ever told um is full of things which could be um ufo sightings starting with the bright star above the manger oh yes absolutely um i I like how you're launching straight into that um yeah so (laughs) it's it's got to be mentioned when when we first uh, discussed the idea of doing this, I thought this would be a nice little, you know, I hate to say it, almost humorous sort of, um, not silly, but but I didn't take this concept that seriously. My goodness, though. I mean, uh, so <laughs> some people may have heard of the uh, Arthurian Society, which uh, is from some years ago now, but a... Uh, uh, a chap claimed to have received a message from some aliens on Venus saying that Jesus was a, a an alien and he, he started a religion based on this and it's it's not taken too seriously by serious ufologists but what I've discovered, yeah, when you scratch the surface of it, actually I think there's far more credence to this than what I ever imagined Okay, I've had quite an education doing this, <laughs> quite right. a surprising one um, okay, so, I'm, I'm yeah. going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go with you on this because, um, I mean, for instance, I, I don't, I'm not a believer. I don't believe the Jesus story. So it's, it's the whole thing's fiction to me. So all, all these, whatever, whatever alien encounters there are in the Jesus story, they're as fictional as, as Jesus to me. Well, I, I've always believed that there was a person um, by the name of Jesus or Jesus or, 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 someone at least that the stories were based upon um you know i I, i've always accepted that there was a genuine person at the root of it all um you know spreading a good word spreading words of love and peace and you know ultimately being sacrificed for that i'm i'm inclined to i'm inclined towards the belief that this is a a, an amalgamation of stories about several people all sort of molded into the legend of one person a bit like a bit like robin hood in our country there there, there were outlaws yes. in in, in um, nottingham in in, the, in sherwood forest um but the, yeah they created this legendary character probably you know centuries after the event um but it's yeah. that kind of thing um, there, there would have been people preaching what were seen as heresies or threats to the state um in in those times hundreds of years later when the when the gospels were written yeah that could have all just been moved into, into one person uh, uh, but christianity also borrows from a lot of other religions just a lot of older religions well i think it's generally accepted that it uh, it developed um from the offshoot um of the egyptian 
Um, so Tutankhamun's father, um, Arkhanaten, because uh, Tutankhamun was originally uh, Tutan Arten. Um, Arkhanaten uh, basically went off. He went away from the the multi-theistic, polytheistic beliefs uh, and believed in one sun god originally. Um, and and yeah, he sort of. He basically left society and started his own civilization, um, and it's yeah, it's generally believed that that that's one of the major origins of Christianity. Uh, yeah, Tutankhamun's father. Um, but yeah, I, I I can see that whole point. You know, it's an amalgam of different people, different stories coming together, and yeah, I I can see that. But let's let's look. At the story itself, then. Um, so you mentioned the star, but let's go back a little bit before that, uh, where the story of Mary being visited by an angel and being impregnated. Well, if you're an alien when race you... and you want to start establishing your race on another planet, what better way than to start impregnating um, the women of that planet and, and so they would give birth to creatures that are more like you especially if you're if you're um whatever your your mix is 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 more dominant that that that, that whatever she gives birth to is going to be more like you than like her human self indeed and let's look at the angels of the bible um so we've got this picture now of them having halos and wings but actually there's no mention of this whatsoever in the bible um, did something that came hundreds, over a thousand years later with the paintings. Um, I think in the Renaissance, uh, they talk about angels ascending. Uh, they talk about them going up into the heavens. No mention of them having wings. No mention of them having halos. They are described as being beings of light, however. Yeah, because I can no, imagine I think, it's more, describe... more a glow around their heads rather than actually a, a, a circular light above their head. Uh, but also the wings. I mean, um, I mean, certainly now that we live in the age of flight since, well, you know, the 18th, 19th centuries, it's certainly been pointed out that there's no way they could fly with those wings if they were the weight of a human being. Oh, no. There's no way they'd be able to actually get airborne so there's obviously magic involved so they don't need the wings if they, if they fly it's by some other means maybe the maybe the wings are just for guidance but well that's that's it but like i say the bible doesn't mention wings anyway so that's a that's a definitely a human uh, invention um i don't think there's any question but they, they could have had something which assisted flight couldn't they, they well why not a craft it talks about them ascending. It talks about them going into the heavens. It doesn't say how. Um, there is one description, I forget where in the Bible, where it talks about uh, an angel coming to earth on a flaming shield. Now think about a UFO. Re-entering the atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why yeah. Not on a flaming shield? Well, you know, how do you recognise a, a, a disc-shaped Thing. And especially with the Romans, you know, you, they had round shields, and, and they're not they're not um, they're not too specific. About, was he sat on it? Was he sat in it? Was he was he riding it like a surfboard? Yeah, yeah, that's that's how yeah, you'd ride exactly. a shield, wouldn't you? you know? No, just came in on a flaming shield. Um, that could easily describe a, a, a saucer shaped craft, for, from my money. Um, shields were round in the Roman times, weren't they? In Indeed. Uh, so, but beings of light—that's that's one that gets me um, wondering. Where we talk about UFO encounters and we talk about orbs, uh, we talk about some basically balls of plasma. Sounds like a being of light to me. Um, so yes. So there's this idea that Jesus could have been perhaps a hybrid uh, alien, uh, where a woman has been impregnated. Uh, you've got the North Star then, um, and yes, that, that, well, it was, that it was screams in, UFO to me. So where where was the star? Was it, was it in the north or was it in the east? Well, ha, ah, there's a very I good question. Well, 
you've got the three wise men um, following the star, and and they're eastern men. They're, they're ma- magi, which are which are of eastern origin, um, and they followed a star. <sighs> Now, does that mean they just headed in the direction of the star? But it's the North Star, so they would have gone north. Well, in the book of Matthew, I think it's, if I've got this right, um, they were sent by Herod, weren't they, and um, to, to deliver these gifts and then to report back to Herod. But they didn't trust Herod. They thought, you know, Herod's going to do us in as soon as we get back. So they, they kind of slipped out the back way. They made their escape by another route. Mm. They definitely they were, they were emissaries of Herod. Ah, um, Gospel of Matthew, here you are, states, Lo, the star which they saw in the east, so it wasn't, that the, yeah, um, but the, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came over and stood where the young child was. So that sounds like a, a UFO that's basically led them right up to the actual child itself and this would have been people who would have had no concept of the vastness of the heavens they would have regarded stars as fairy lights in the sky and you know one of them's come down from yeah they they would have measured it in maybe yards or miles or whatever but they, they wouldn't have understood that these these stars are millions billions of light years away so when they see a bright light come down from the sun, oh, it's a star just coming down. Well, um, you say that, but actually the Magi, I think it's generally understood, would have been, uh, possibly amongst other things, astronomers. Would they? So they would have understood, yeah, planets and stars. That that was fairly common knowledge around that time. But it, it was still, it was still a commonly held belief until the Middle Ages, that the Earth was the centre of the universe and the Sun revolved around the Earth at, along with the Moon. I mean, Galileo was imprisoned by the... It was Galileo, wasn't it? He was imprisoned by the Inquisition for suggesting otherwise. Well, yes, and even though uh, we now know that the uh, Earth is... Um, well, not spherical, it's actually an oblate spheroid... Um, but but essentially round uh you still get this sudden rise in flat earthers today so um knowledge and beliefs going retrograde is is not an uncommon thing no um but yeah so there's this possibility with the star let's move a little bit further into um the story of jesus then um so there's the mir- the miracles that he performs. Yeah, uh, sorry. There's one there's there's... one of these miracles in particular that's burning on my mind um, is the raising of the dead, um, which he did for himself in, at the end, but also in between time he he um, he raised Lazarus from the dead, and this is straight out of uh, Plan Nine from Outer Space, isn't it? It's our plan. We will we will we will raise the dead to. Um, create a zombie well, horde to overthrow the humans before we invade but be that as it may it's just something i've always wondered um that for me the lazarus story lacks certain detail if, if any any listeners uh, have an idea of what, what the answer to this is that uh, what happened to lazarus afterwards after he'd been raised from the dead did he just sort of sit around coughing for a couple of days and then die again or is he still alive now um what happened to lazarus that's what uh, <laughs> I think that's one of the great mysteries of life um uh, certainly of the story um but yeah but okay but I don't think we need to look as far as science fiction I think we look at modern day uh, events and technology uh what if he wasn't actually dead what if he was in a coma and um Jesus had some medical science that was able to revive him we have science today that can bring people back from the dead. You know, people can die, you know, um, be, be dead for minutes and still be brought, brought back to life. Yeah. Um, you talk about things like the laying on of the hands. Well, if... <laughs> how would people 2,000 years ago um, have identified someone giving someone an injection? 
you know, would that be seen as just touching them, you know, healing them with a touch? Uh, curing of blindness, you know, that, all these things are things that we can do today. Yes. Um, walking on water is a little bit more of a complex one. Um, but then when you think about water skiers, I don't I don't know. Um, that, that one's a bit harder for me to, to explain. Um turning water into wine you sort of transmutation um is a form of alchemy i suppose uh i can turn water into wine but it just takes a few weeks you know, i don't need a lot of <laughs> yeast can, and, and sugar <laughs> and grapes. i can turn wine into a form of water um <laughs> but uh but yeah but but the point is to a technologically advanced race these things are not no longer sort of miraculous strange things they are you know some some th of the miracles that jesus performed are now common everyday things to us um let alone a technologically advanced race so i can definitely see some aspects there but There's i can also, also see how that was a story um, that just got distorted uh, in the retelling and retelling and retelling that jesus did something and Chinese whispers, it eventually got to, oh, he raised someone from the dead. Indeed. Um, My money would be on something more like that, that it was a tale just in the retelling, just changed and changed and changed until it became this. Possibly, but then how would it, like I said, how would a coma be interpreted back then? Would it be seen as death? I don't know. I have no idea what, 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 how, how well they could look for vital signs or anything like that that someone was actually still alive but just couldn't wake up. Or well, indeed, and without medical intervention, most likely comas would have ended in death anyway. Yeah. So, would there be that much of a difference? Hmm. Um, that's but, just I mean, a, they, they would know if someone was just unconscious they would have they would have had to deal with unconscious people before wouldn't they, they would, someone who's been knocked on the head or that that can't have been unknown to them indeed um there's also now this is quite an interesting one there's an egyptian text uh that's currently in an american museum unfortunately i don't know which one that suggests that jesus might have been uh, a shapeshifter mm -hmm. of some description, which is uh, a relatively common reoccurrence in uh, UFO. Um, I want to say mythology, that's not the right word, but uh, certainly in, in UFO culture, uh, that's a better word. Um, it says, how shall we arrest him? For he does not have a single shape, but his appearance changes. Sometimes he is ruddy, sometimes he is white, sometimes he is red, sometimes he is wheat-coloured, sometimes he is pallid like ascetics, sometimes he is a youth, sometimes an old man. That's a shape-changer right there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, but what, what, Which book is that from? Uh, it's not from a book, it's from a, an Egyptian text. Oh, okay. Apparently. So, that's quite an interesting one. Jesus himself um, said something, though, in John, in the book of John, uh, John 18.23, which could be interpreted as him claiming to be an alien. He states, and he was saying to them, you are from below, I am from above, you are of this world, I am not of this world. Mm. So that, if you accept the the Gospels as gospel, um, is a direct quote from Jesus saying he is not of this world, that he is an alien. Mm. Or that, as it would have been taken in those days... He's in heaven, which is up in the sky. I mean, even um, I mean, even into the 18th century, I think when the when the the Montgolfier brothers made flight possible, when they 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 made their first balloon flights in the 1700s, that people were concerned that they would 
they would disturb God in his heaven by going up into the sky. That it's just up there above the clouds. And um, But then eventually, you know, when, when obviously there was no evidence of, of, a, of a heavenly paradise up there, um, they kind of had to change the story about where heaven is. Well, that's... <sighs> That's an interesting point in of itself, is where does this concept that heaven is up in the sky somewhere, which is so prevalent in so many religions, um, comes back to this whole ancient alien theory um, that, that, you know, aliens came down in ancient times and, you know, were were perceived as gods. Um, Yeah, you know, upwards, you know, that's where that's the home of the gods that's where they live um, i'm surprised they don't have more reverence then for birds because they see birds these creatures which can fly these birds can fly up to heaven and they've got wings like angels have so that's that's how they get there so you know these these creatures are maybe emissaries from from heaven why are we keeping them in cages uh, or, or eating them <laughs> it's, it's quite possible that some do um so and then you've got you, you mentioned earlier about um Jesus's uh return from the dead his, his resurrection yeah now, um, can i can i just get the chronology of his execution right that as i understand it what we're talking about is a botched execution that he was he was put up on the cross on on the friday which is just you know shabbat the sabbat the sabbath starts the Jewish Sabbath starts on the Friday evening until sundown on Saturday. So they nailed mm-hmm. him to this cross, along with a couple of other ne'er-do-wells. And he was nailed up there to die a slow death. So yes. he, he, he was meant to, you know, he'd probably last a, a few days up there before the life expired at him. However, um, a centurion intervened, played by John Wayne in the 1966 film The Greatest Story Ever Told, and threw a spear into Jesus' side to put him out of his misery and, and killed him prematurely. And, um, and so they're all stood around thinking, well, nice one, Centurion. We, we've made no plans to bury him because we didn't expect him to be dead. We can't, we can't have a funeral on the Sabbath. We can't pick up tools because that's, that's forbidden. So we can't, so normally someone's been executed or died anyway. In the Jewish culture and Middle Eastern cultures, you get them in the ground the next day. You know, funerals happen. You know, if you die in, East, in Israel or any Middle Eastern country, even in Ireland, they bury you. The, the funerals the next day, they hold the wake that night, and the funeral. They're thinking, "Oh, great!" So we can't bury him until Sunday because it's the Sabbath. We can't. We can't do anything. So. That's why they didn't bury Jesus when he was supposedly dead. They they put him in this. Let's let's just put him in this handy nearby grotto, and roll a big rock in front of the door so no one can nick the body. That's what I understand what's happened. That's why Jesus wasn't buried. Mm. Um, and and then when they came back on the Sunday, the body had gone. Just the, oh shit! Yeah, we put this big boulder there so this couldn't happen and. Bloody hell, obviously wasn't heavy enough. Well, um, there's that. Now, let's... Let, I think part part of the thing that adds to the confusion is that in the Bible itself, there are different versions of the resurrection. That, that it contradicts itself, basically. So There are some inconsistencies in that book. There are, well, there are a number of inconsistencies in the Bible, it's got to be said. Um, But the basics of that story, um, he was killed whilst on the cross. He was put into a cave with a stone in front of it, and three days later he was gone. Let's say, yes, um, there was a spear put into it. Let's say someone... Put a spear where his heart would be. What if he was an extraterrestrial? Isn't it reasonable that his heart would have actually have been in a different place, and that what would appear to be a fatal wound on a human could actually have been non-fatal to him? Yeah, but that also 
makes a mockery of the idea that he died on the cross for us because he said, well, actually, he didn't die and he wouldn't have died because he had a completely different metabolism and things that would kill you or I wouldn't kill him because, yeah, he didn't die on the cross and he didn't suffer on the cross because the centurion oh, out of his misery. I, I think I think he would have suffered. Um, I suffered I mean, a bit, but, you know, how, how we long see, were he up there before the centurion well, put him out of his misery? We see movies where people are tied to the cross and that never happened. Nails were put in through your wrist. Uh, it wasn't through your palms of your hands, as people thought. It was actually through the wrist, and the nails were shaped such that they twisted the tendons so that your own fist closed up over the nail to prevent it from being removed. Um, it, it was a horrible, horrible thing to happen. Incredibly painful. They, when they examined the Turin Shroud, um, that's when they they learned that actually, yeah, you don't crucify someone by putting a nail through their hand because it will just rip and it will come out between the fingers. Yeah. Um, yeah you have to just... put it in you know, behind the wrist bone. Well, that's it. And there, there are a number of reasons why that happens. So the, the nails themselves uh, are, are sort of wide up close to the head of the nail to deliberately twist the tendon. Yeah. But I mean, he was so also tied, you... wasn't he? He was also had ropes around him. He was tied to the cross. I would imagine that as well, but but certainly it wouldn't have been a very pleasant experience. Um, I, I, I think it's safe to say um, we're making the assumption now that Jesus was a real person. But, but do you know, I'm, I'll say anybody who was uh, crucified, as, as indeed a lot of people were, um, they would have suffered, definitely would have suffered. Unless someone put, yeah, well, yeah, even yeah, for the for the time that they stayed alive, if they're, if they're lucky, someone puts them out of their misery. But yeah, I can imagine the nails going to the wrist. That must hurt like hell. But nothing oh, compared to the nail going through the top of your foot. I bet that's mm. a real bloody killer. I yeah, um, don't really want to think about it. And it's Christmas. Let's and it's Christmas. So yeah, let's not, let's <laughs> not dwell this is an Easter too time story. Really, we're, we're, we're um, getting into. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's quite Let's possible look. that yeah he didn't die on the cross, um, or that you know he died, but not in the sense that we understand that he's capable of um, self-resurrection. Indeed. Um, and let's move on then to the ascension forty days later. Um, so the ascension itself, uh, we are taught. Um, <sighs> In full view of everyone, Jesus rose up into the sky. A cloud hid him from sight. Um, two angels appeared before the disciples um, and said, basically, he's gone back to heaven. Um, he'll come back the way that you have just seen him leave. Hmm. Didn't, didn't Mary also get taken up body and soul? Uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't know. Well, I, I think don't she know did. I mean, it's pure, that. pure Star Trek, that one. Yeah. Um, but, so, Jesus rose up into the air. Again, was this the aid of, with the aid of some sort of craft? Was the cloud that obscured him from view a UFO? Oh, well, it was a UFO. We don't know what it was. It was flying, you know. Um, so in the truest sense of the word, we know it's a UFO. But um, was it some sort of extraplanetary craft that took him away? Was he being returned to his planet? Yeah. But uh, that's... that's uh, uh... And it's also an Easter story, <laughs> It's also an Easter story, but but we're talking about Jesus as a as a, as a whole here. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's where we are with it. Uh, so it's time for our customary summary. Uh, so Neil, Jesus was he an extraterrestrial? Um, I, I I still stick with my view that Jesus was more an idea than a, a single person. Um, he was a collection of stories. He was a collection of folk tales, parables, um, m moral tales. Um. Okay, but could those stories, could those stories have been influenced by otherworldly visitors? And those stories seem to have been influenced by 
certainly things they didn't understand but yeah which which fit the criteria for um extraterrestrial activity from from 2000 years ago so you think there might be something in this theory then there, there's something in those stories but of course they're they're only stories they're not reliable histories they're not well, they're not documented histories they're not you you, you can yeah, it, it, that's not what they're there for. They're there to tell you a tale. Okay, um, I'm, I'm of the. I, I I can definitely see where you're coming from, um, and I don't disagree. But I do think there's there's something more to it. Um, as I say, I come from the the view that there was a person, um, and if that was the case, then yeah, this would, this if those stories happen today. This is definitely how we would interpret them as extraterrestrial. Um, in, in fact, it's been said that uh, ufology is perhaps the a, a new version of religion. It's certainly how we would interpret the same things. It certainly has many of the traits, but certainly if a young woman or an older woman came up to me and told me that she was a virgin, well, I wouldn't believe that for a start, but if she told me she was a virgin and she was pregnant, I'd say, yeah, no way. And I think... I, I, I challenge, you know, it, most Christians out there would, would think the same. They'd think, no, this is someone with mental health issues or some need to deny or yeah, someone, she's got Indeed. herself into trouble somehow. Um, but and uh, here's the thing, there are such stories in ufology. Yeah, and also, um, if someone came up to me and said, I'm the son of God, I wouldn't believe him. And... And I, I imagine most people out there wouldn't believe anyone who came up to them and said, I'm the son of God, and God told me to tell you to do this. But, you know, you'd be saying, well, you know, sorry, what were God's exact words? What did... Indeed, indeed. Um, so, yeah, so I'm... It sounds like we're both pretty much on the fence, although perhaps I'm leaning rather more towards... Uh, this being an extraterrestrial. One thing I think we can agree on uh, is that the idea of, of a Jesus person, um, as long as it brings people peace and love and harmony in their lives, um, I think it's safe to believe whatever you want, don't you? I think so. I think, I think actually what, what is compelling, now that I think about it, <laughs> um, got it just <laughs> out off the top of my head, is that kind of these are stories of extraterrestrial events told by people who would have had no concept of extraterrestrials which yeah. gives a kind of veracity to them there we go uh, yeah um, but, um, but, but, no I'm <laughs> good okay but as ever I'm going to ask the question what do you think listeners um you know, uh, have we got it all wrong? Is it, you know, are, are you a true believer? Are you a true Christian? And do not believe in extraterrestrial intervention with these matters. Are we absolutely bang on the money? Um, and yes, Jesus was an ET here for the betterment of mankind. Do write in. Tell us what you think. Uh, the usual places, Twitter and Facebook, we're on. Um, you can find all the details at aliensexplored.com. Um, don't forget to join us next year. <laughs> hey, I've been waiting for ages to say that. Uh, when we'll be discussing a very interesting development uh, where the former head of Israel's space programme has come forward and said that aliens are absolutely real. We'll be discussing that one in some depth. So that's one to look forward to for next year, isn't it, Neil? I'm already looking forward to it. Indeed. It's given so, me something to live for. <laughs> in the meantime, keep watching those mint spies and skies. <laughs> and uh, have, have a cool your peace and love and goodwill to all, all of you out. Indeed. It's happy holidays from me. And Merry Christmas from me. And take care, everyone. Bye, everyone. See you next year. Bye. Bye.
Aliens Explored is a Figo Films production in association with Juicy Falls. Music by HookSounds.com and editing by Stu Jackson. Find us on Facebook and Twitter or by visiting AliensExplored.com.